I really think that as as cleaners, we work so damn hard. We are so deserving to be paid properly, to have the tools like every other industry has and be able to run our freaking business and be on our best game. And so if there's any way that I can be a little part of that, I 100% will take it. In this week's episode of the Cleaning Business Mentor Podcast, I had the pleasure of interviewing Ms. Diana Mutoria. Now, Diana and I are friends. We connected on Instagram a few years back, and I was just blown away by her story and the impact that she has on the cleaning industry today. Now, Diana started off cleaning homes like many of us have and found a issue in the cleaning industry and turned that into a business. Not only is she the founder of Clean, but she taught herself how to code. Now, her story is just amazing, and I'm very excited for you guys to listen, so please tune in. So, Diana, can you give us a little bit of backstory about how you got into the cleaning industry as a solo cleaner, and then how then you later pivoted to creating and coding your own app for cleaners? Yeah, absolutely. So I came to the U.S. when I was 18 years old by myself. I came to study math and mechanical engineering uh, in Texas. And I did pretty well in school until my very last year when my new math advisor told me that I don't seem to look like an engineer. And because of her opinion, I ended up losing my scholarships and finding myself homeless and cleaning homes at the same time. And during this time, it was a really dark time for me. I'm the only one who's reached this far in my family. And I'm literally thousands of miles away from home. And I was like, I have to do something. So as I started cleaning, I was knocking on doors, knocking from door to door, leaving my phone number, literally just marketing myself. And the very first lady who uh, gave me the chance literally opened an entire community or entire neighborhood for me because she was referring me to the next person and the next person and the next person. And I looked around and I was like, okay, the same cleaners in the same community are having the same problems that I'm having. How can we automate this process so that we can just focus on the cleaning part, which we're really great at? And so clean came about because of that trouble, those challenges that I was going through. I started working with contractors. Remember I had a background in math, not programming. And I failed four times, four years, four times in a row. And in 2020, I got so sick of failing that I said, I'm just going to sit down and learn how to code. And I built the very first clunky app, but it worked. And it helped me understand what type of developers to have in my team. And second, how to communicate business vision to the technical side, which a lot of people have trouble doing. So it ended up becoming a huge blessing and a a muscle that I ended up having. At the moment, we have MVP2 out. We have about 3,000 beta testers. Our biggest markets is New York, Florida, and Texas. And at the moment, we have such great product market fit that it's forcing us to evolve the product. So we're starting again and saying, how can we make this product better so that it can serve more cleaners than we have at the moment? That is truly amazing. You are definitely not a quitter (laughs) at all. But just to bring it back a little bit, you are originally, you were born and raised in Kenya. So you came to the States all alone by yourself at the age of 18 years old. So was going to college for, you said engineering, correct? Yes, math and mechanical engineering. Okay, so math and mechanical engineering ended up dropping out, started to clean houses because like you said, you were couch surfing and saw a problem, you know, within the cleaning industry and took it upon yourself to number one, come up with the idea of the clean app. And then again, you had four failed attempts at getting the app off the ground or having it built. So you went ahead and then taught yourself something completely different. Coding was 100% new to you, correct? Yes. That is so crazy. That is very, very, very impressive. So you found a couple of different pain points uh, within the cleaning community that you were a part of. And what were those pain points? A lot of the pain points was the time wasted between cleanings. So trying to find new customers, trying to manage 
all these customers at the same time. Trying to reach customers, let's say you bought leads and maybe use one of the other platforms there. You don't know when they're going to get back to you. You have to all constantly try to reach this cleaner. I mean, these customers. Also payments. It was a big deal too, trying to figure out what is the best way to have a customer pay you. Those things wasted so much time of so much of my time. By the time I got to a cleaning, I've wasted hours. And so I, I said, how can I automate all of that so that I can just focus on building my business? So when I was also solo cleaning, it was very difficult, like you said, to keep track of number one, who your clients are. Payment was a really big one. So many of us have gotten burned before, you know, taking bad checks, not having any credit card information on file, you know, pretty much getting stiffed for cleans and having cancellation appointments. That's freaking amazing. Can you go into a little bit about what the functionalities are that clean has? Yeah. So one of the things that we do differently compared to other platforms is we don't spray out one person's information to multiple cleaners. From what we've heard from our cleaners is they absolutely hate that business model where a certain platform would take your information and then spray it out to multiple cleaners. So you're constantly trying to call this lead and trying to figure out like, will they ever pick up? Do they even, are they serious? And maybe they already had their cleaning two, three weeks ago. So we make it in a way that a customer is so educated in what to expect and how much it's going to cost depending on how much you are pricing your services so that when they are actually moving and requesting you, they request you knowing that they're comfortable and confident that the work is going to be done. So that's the difference that we do. It's way less stressful for the cleaner. And you know when a, a lead is coming to you or a request is coming to you, it's a legit request and it's something that you can actually do. I personally, myself, and I know a number of different business owners in the industry, we have used other platforms such as like Yelp, Bark, Angie's List, and their model of how they charge for their leads is pretty much you set in X amount of ad spend. So I can put, let's say $100 for the week. And as soon as you hit that budget and you submit it, you're flooded with a bunch of nonsense requests, right? So people like that, number one, aren't looking to pay what we're looking for. Number two, some of them feel so much like spam that I'm convinced that, you know, some of these people are bots even. Point being that like those type of platforms, I feel like they have such a bad rep because of the amount of money that they take up front. And then there's like no guaranteed work, right? Like that's one of the things that sucks so bad is that you go ahead, you put in this budget and then you might get a bunch of clicks, but none of them convert. Like I said, I have spent like probably thousands of dollars on different uh, platforms and apps like that over the years because in hopes I'm thinking, you know, oh, maybe they came out with something different. Maybe they're doing something better, but that's really never the case. And now I know from speaking with you, you know, testing the app out that that's not your model of how you guys charge for leads. So that is a huge one also because you are legitimately helping cleaning business owners because you've been in their shoes. And you know what? I'm going to let you talk a little bit about the pricing model and how the app works for you know the cleaner side. One of the biggest pains when it comes to pricing for cleaners is that every platform wants to dictate how much you should be paid. And I don't agree with that. You should be able to set your own prices as a cleaning business and continue doing your business. And so we give that freedom to the cleaner and the cleaning business and say, how much do you want to price your own services? Because pricing is going to vary on jurisdiction, state, you know, level of quality of the service. It's going to vary. And so we don't want to come in and say, because we are the middlemen in terms of technology, that's literally it. We're not going to mess around and say, oh, this is how much you should charge. That's not our part to play. Some companies bait and switch. And so they're like, they put out an ad there and they say, it's nine bucks or 10 bucks to get your house cleaned, but it's really not. And so even though it's a promotion, it ends up hurting the cleaner. And our philosophy is keep the cleaner first, keep the cleaner first, keep the cleaner first. If it's not working for the cleaner, then it's not going to work for us. We don't dictate the pricing that the cleaner 
provides or says that they're going to have. Which is amazing because like you said, so many other platforms will try to lowball the cleaner. Yeah. So number one, you guys, what she's saying is that you guys can put your own pricing in to the platform. So if you're at $40 an hour, if you're at $50 an hour, whatever it is, you tailor your pricing so that when a client clicks onto your profile, they already know how much money it is that you're requesting. Absolutely. And we've made it in such a model where if you're not successful as a cleaner, we cannot be successful. We're not going to be a leech on the cleaner's back and make money out of them. So we take only 10% to literally continue growing as a tech company, but everything else goes to the cleaner. So I really love that model because again, you are allowing the cleaners to number one, get the request for the cleaning, you know, confirm the cleaning amount and how much they're willing to do the job for. And then you guys actually only charge for the clean after it's booked and completed. Yes. And sometimes, you know, there's some platforms that are going to hold on to your money for two weeks. We don't do that. The first time it goes directly to you, it may take two days to get approved and process, you know, financial stuff. But after that, it's the same day you get paid the same day, which is a huge relief to a lot of cleaners. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like me, myself, I want to get paid the same day. And it's totally understandable about just the first time payment taking the two days just so that everything is verified bank financial information. So I think that is super beneficial to anybody that owns a cleaning business and is looking to get more leads that doesn't want to have to pay up front. And on top of being paying up front with a budget paying money that you know, is not going to be well spent. So this is not a pay per click type of deal. This is not, you know, where you load your budget in and you get sent random leads. This is you setting your prices, the app clean, sending you the jobs to confirm or accept. And you already know what the client is going to be paying you. The client understands what your fees are. And then only after you book the job and complete it, then will clean take their 10% of the money. Now, personally, to me, that sounds like an absolutely fair deal. For me, it's like you're almost getting like this marketing for the jobs like on credit. That's how I see that. It's like, okay, you're going to let me book the job without me paying up front. And then you take your 10%. So I really love that business model. Again, I've been through so many platforms that have burned me personally, ran through thousands of dollars, and I hear it all the time. So this is definitely the first time that I've heard of this type of business model. I agree with you, Caroline. Like we both are in the cleaning industry and we understand so intimately what are some of the challenges that we have. It's just fair that the people who are building the platforms for cleaners have been cleaners before. And so my intention is to build wealth in the cleaning industry and remove that cap, that invisible cap that most cleaners or cleaning businesses have. And that requires cleaners and cleaning businesses getting back their time. And so if we're able to automate everything that can give back them time so that they can actually scale and grow their business, I would upsell 100% do that. Oh yeah, absolutely. And again, too, this is for cleaning business owners on every level. So if you're just starting out, this is ideal. A lot of us start off with literally nothing, the cleaning supplies that we have at home or a quick stop at the dollar store. And even on, you know, much more established businesses as well, even like myself now going on year five, I would much rather get the leads, do the job and then give you my 10%. And I honestly feel like even 10%, you guys are like lowballing yourselves. You know what I mean? <laughs> Because just for the amount of money that it costs, you know, customer acquisition is, it's insane. If you guys don't know this already, it's a lot of money to acquire a client for house cleaning. So that 10% is minimal compared to throwing money at Google, throwing money at any of those other platforms where you're not even guaranteed any types of jobs. So as far as your app connects potential clients with cleaners, is it almost like a little bit of a CRM because you do get to keep their stored information for, you know, all your past cleans. So you get to be organized. Now I've also tested out the app and I did like the feature where pretty much you can add a bunch of different services. So not only put in house cleaning, but if you do any type of carpet cleaning, pretty much almost any kind of service, I would say, right, for homes, Diana? 
Because I also saw dog walking on there, which I thought was freaking genius because we do have clients that ask us like, hey, do you mind taking the dog out? Or can you do this, this, and that? So that's really awesome feature where you can literally put a full list of your services, whether it's move in, move out, post construction, deep cleans, dog walking. Listen, you can even put watering the plants up there. (laughs) Yeah, and we're always asked to do extra service. And so how can we continue putting more money in the cleaner's pocket? Those extra services, those value adds that us as cleaners usually provide to our clients. So the way we've set up the application is if you have an extra service, you can literally add it there and it's going to appear immediately in that market. So again, we don't dictate what the cleaner does. We give you the tools to grow your business. We do not get in the middle of your business. And so if you have a service that is more specialized and it's difficult for you to provide this request to other platforms, you don't have to worry about that with clean. So as soon as you add it in, it appears. So if someone is on the application on the other side, they're able to see that service is provided in their area. That is fantastic. And then how does it work on the user end, the customer end? On the customer end, they register on the application. They add the details of their home. So that's the type of home, square footage, bedrooms and bathrooms, if they have pets and any special instructions. And then they save that. They save also as a form of payment. So we have put it in a way where because we're putting the cleaner first, we don't want to waste their time. The customer has to add their payment before a request is sent over just to make sure that they have the money to pay you. And literally that's it. Everything has been saved. So when they provide or when they are making a request, they literally just pick what they want to clean. So if it's the kitchen and maybe you have a son and you don't want your son's bedroom to be touched because it's, you know, you're trying to build discipline, clean your room. You can definitely do that. You're going to see based on the square footage, how much it's going to cost, what is the pricing. And then you can send that request out and a cleaner is going to pick it up and see exactly what you want. So if it's light cleaning, deep cleaning, so bedrooms or the entire house and the special instructions for it. And literally that's it. You have literally thought of every aspect (laughs) of this app, every pain point that you yourself have suffered really went into it. So like literally your heart and soul went into this app. You even freaking taught yourself how to code. And I definitely want to talk a little bit about that because I can't even imagine, (laughs) like I learned how to like build websites and stuff like that. And that's like minimal (laughs) compared to literally like coding. And you learn this at what, what, like 18, 19, 20 years old. If I add 22 plus four, I learned it when I was 26. Okay. So yeah. So you, you did learn this like a little bit later on in life. You were already going to college for something else. You were cleaning houses, trying to, you know, establish a life in Arizona at the time. Was it, was it Arizona? Yeah. In Arizona, couch surfing. And you were like, you know what? I'm just going to teach myself how to code. So what was that like? Like, I, I know why you did it. I know why you did it because you said you had th- that, you know, past experience with past coders and people that were building the app for you. But it's hard for me to even think about learning another language. Like, I'm always telling myself, like, oh, I need to learn Spanish. And I kind of understand that. But you are so ballsy, literally. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I'm going to teach myself how to code. So what was that like? How long did that take? Was it as difficult as you expected? How did that go? Oh, uh, you know, when you're learning something new, it's always difficult. It's always overwhelming. There's always this doubt of thinking like, should I even be doing this in the first place? I had all those feelings at the same time. I think what drove me was that I was literally at the bottom from here. Like what's next? You know, there's that part of us that I think all cleaners have that grit of I'm not going to give up. I'm going to continue chugging along. And that's exactly what I did. So just to help me and support me through my learning I found all the free resources that I could, you know, going to the public library, finding free classes online, finding free classes around town in Phoenix. And I came across some of them. I started to understand like, oh, there's a front end and then there's a back end. And then this is what you use here in the front end. And this is what you do in the back end. And it wasn't super specialized. It was just enough for me to be able to 
communicate to another developer that this is what I want. And when they're talking to me, it doesn't sound like gibberish. At least 50% of the time, it doesn't sound gibberish so that I can make some steps ahead. So I wouldn't say that you have to be perfect or you have to be great. You just have to start. Amen. And I just wanted to touch back on, because I asked you, I'm like, you know, was it difficult? Pretty much how the situation that you were in at the time, like you said, you were at rock bottom, which many of us have been there multiple times, (laughs) some of us. And rather than, you know, pretty much you had your back against the wall. So you were like, okay, either I'm going to learn how to code or what's my alternative? It was either you were going to learn how to code or maybe go back home, right? Which was not an option for you. Not an option. I mean, in my culture, going back home empty handed is like, (laughs) it's like a sin. I can imagine they'll give you like the walk of shame. It's like the walk of shame back home. I was like, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to figure it out. It was like, should I learn how to code or should I quit? And the more I looked into the, the industry, the more I saw there was nothing. There's no one who was trying to cater to cleaners. And it made me feel like I just, there was something in me that just said, you cannot quit. You cannot quit. You cannot quit. I even talked to some people and they're like, this does not, this does not make any sense. You should focus on the customer. The cleaner will be fine. And in my heart, something, just my intuition was saying, nope, just keep going because there's something here. Keep going. Well, first I want to just tell you how proud I am of you. (laughs) Like literally you came here by yourself, which most people haven't even been on a plane by themselves. You came to a completely different country Things didn't work out for you in school and, you know, you decided I have to do something. So you went ahead and started your own cleaning business, which is like, you know, the American dream, so to say, you know, you were cleaning homes, you found a problem and you decided to go ahead and start on a completely different venture. However, you didn't give up. You didn't quit when so many times everything, like all the odds were against you. And you just kept the positive attitude, worked toward your goals, and literally taught yourself something that now, and and correct me if I'm wrong, I feel like this is like what you were meant to be doing. It does feel that way. I mean, like the way you talk tech and apps, and I I mean, I follow you on Instagram, I watch your your YouTube videos, you know, every time we we, we catch up and chat and like you're always like on a plane, (laughs) on a stage, Uh, you know, competing for something. I'm just like always cheering you on. But like literally, you know, you thought you were going to clean houses and then it just completely evolved into its own business. And then like, it's totally, it's like all consuming, but completely in like the positive way, right? You taught yourself how to code. I did see uh, recently you were at this Amazon, what was that? Amazon SaaS? Yeah, the Amazon Accelerator for Women Founders. Yes, you were you were doing that. You're always doing something. What are you currently doing now? I always watch you and your team. And I swear to God, nobody gets on a plane more than you guys than the <laughs> clean team. We have been traveling a lot lately. <laughs> at the moment, I am at Techstars. It's one of the biggest accelerators in the country. We were picked out of 12 startups, one of the 12 startups, most promising startups in the world. It's really an incredible and honoring place to be it's quite humbling and just seeing that people are cheering us on knowing that they also see the problem that we see as cleaners and they want someone to actually get a solution out that is very much inclined with what we really feel every day it's such an honor and so at the moment we are evolving our product we're making it more better user friendly um, for more cleaners and then man, we're just ready to help as many cleaners build wealth. And, you know, every single time, actually, Caroline, I talk about you. And I no say, way. <laughs> I literally talk about you and AJ and Mila. And I'm like, do you see what these cleaners are doing? Do you see what these cleaners exactly. are doing? Exactly. Like, I'm literally getting goosebumps. I'm over here, like, tearing up. <laughs> I'm over here just like literally listening to your story, which I already know, but like, it's just so literally like empowering and inspiring because guys, you cannot quit. Like you literally legitimately cannot quit when you feel at your lowest, when people are telling you that your ideas are no good, 
you know, that you don't belong somewhere. You cannot listen to them. Okay. I have spoken with so many successful entrepreneurs such as Diana and including myself as well. And we all have the same somewhat of a story, right? Hitting rock bottom, some type of struggle, being broke, being homeless. It's just, it's truly freaking inspiring just watching everything that you do with the team and just the amount of grit you have. You're always just pushing forward. And now you're just doing like such big freaking things. <laughs> it's insane. I'm like, my friend has her own freaking app. Like, it's sick. It's so sick. Thank you. I appreciate it so much, Caroline. Like, I hope I get to a point where I can literally help you 3x your revenue in your business and not feel overwhelmed. And I really think that as, as cleaners, we work so damn hard. We are so deserving to be paid properly, to have the tools like every other industry has and be able to run our freaking business and be on our best game. And so if there's any way that I can be a little part of that, I 100% will take it. It's very selfless of you too, because you know the struggles that solo cleaners, cleaners in general, period, because not every month is a good month. You know, how the economy is all wacky. COVID really screwed a lot of things for a lot of people. And you're like, I just want to give. I want to give. Like, that's what I hear from you. Like, I want to give. I have a problem to solve and like a community of people that I want to help out. So that is just amazing. You and your team are doing freaking great things. So we know that you started, learn how to code on your own and whatnot. But how was it for you to get the capital to fund this? And I don't know much about apps, but I'm sure that it does cost money. The few conversations I've had with people or colleagues that are attempting to start an app or had an app or were trying to start an app is that you need money. Yes. Yes, you do. How did you get this money? <laughs> How did you get this money? How are you guys like going on these trips? I'm just like so curious. And I know you guys are like winning a lot of different events or projects and stuff like that. But can you tell us like, how did this come to be? Like, how did you get the capital? How much work actually goes into it? Because it, also anyone that's going to be listening that might be thinking about getting into tech and into the app building. Can you give us a little bit about how to get, you know, from an idea to an actual downloadable app like you have? Yeah. So at first, when I was trying to build it through contractors, I used expensive contractors and super cheap contractors, and both of them failed. And it's mostly because I was so new at understanding what the heck is going on that I was not providing the right tools for the developers to actually do their job. Now, there's some who just did not know and they wanted just to pick up a job, but there are some who were actually good, but they were not equipped enough with the right information to build the application. At that time also, Uber was so new, it felt like it was like a it was like a big steep to make a marketplace application, which right now is way easier. So how I did it is I literally bootstrapped. So every single time I would try to see, okay, how do I get from here to here? How much money is it going to cost between these gaps that I have? It was through getting other jobs. Like there's literally no secret sauce. It was just getting a job that's better, pays better so that I can pay my developers. And I reached out to developers in my home country, which helped a lot. And I had like my, my CTO at the moment, Ezekiel, who's amazing. And at that time when we met, I literally just called and said, hey, dude, I can only afford just a hundred bucks. And he's like, listen, I've seen your video. I know exactly what you want to do. I'm here for it. And he just jumped on. So there are different ways that you can get into technology without breaking bank. It's literally just making those connections, making those relationships helping that person understand where you want to go. And there are literally people like that. You don't have to pay so much out of your pocket, especially if a developer or a great developer understands that you're getting started. They usually, there are different ways. Like it can be equity. It can be a way to like something that has like a contract that's after like one year or something of that sort. There's so many ways that you can have a great relationship with a good developer and get your first product out. 
it also helped me working for a tech company. I realized that I had a huge gap. There were a lot of things I did not know. I did not know. And when I moved from selling as I was selling cars also to make this money to getting into a tech company, I realized that technology is so vast. And now it's really just how do I make sure that I'm picking the right technology for me, for the solution or the problem that I have. And it took me having that exposure. I had that exposure getting into technology, working for a tech company. And then the second tech company that I worked for, that's when I really understood how to run a really well-oiled machine as a tech company. And so I would say, one, find someone who you can literally partner with and have like a pact and say, hey, we're going to work on this until we have MVP one out. It may look ugly. We may have an ugly baby out in the market, but it works and people are happy. That's literally the beginning. And when you work with someone that way, there's a level of trust that you'll continue to build over time. They understand you. You understand them. You understand what their weaknesses are. They understand what your weaknesses are. And you literally just help each other that way. That's what I would personally recommend. Hey, there's some people who say, I'm just going to put $40,000 in an application and let them just, you know, handle it. Right. But you're telling us you don't have to do that. And, you know, one of my mentors had mentioned the same type of idea to me. He's like, you know, not all the time do you have to use your own resources or if you don't have any money, it's like you don't have to necessarily go out and put money into it, but find yourself a partner or find yourself multiple partners, right? One or two people that number one, you know, trust in that, you know, will work for you and your vision that you're trying to work on. And pretty much like it's a process of telling these people, listen, this is the idea that I have. This is my vision. This is my dream. And this potentially is going to be something, you know, very, very large, something that's going to make us money in the future. However, you know, at this time, like you said, I can only pay you a hundred (laughs) bucks. Sometimes we're not getting paid, right? Like that's what it is. Sometimes we're not getting paid. And sometimes, listen, we might even have to put some money in and we're not going to see anything back for a couple of months. So you can find your team and obviously you have to get to know that person, But what you did was you sold your vision to your first employee for the clean and they believed in so much so in what you were doing and trying to accomplish and your vision and also trusting in you as a person, right? That you're going to, you know, move things forward in a professional manner and get things off the ground. So that is definitely one way to go is find partners, people that are willing to put in that sweat equity and stay up all those late nights with you working on the business. So pretty much, you guys, what she's saying is there's no excuses. <laughs> Even if you don't have the money, there are alternative routes to you know accomplishing your goals and getting things done. Absolutely. Being in Techstars has really opened my eyes in how collaboration works. I mean... There are some people who are in industries where they have really high competition and they decide to work together. So every time that you feel that I'm not competent in one thing, trust me, there's someone who is, and you can always make a partnership with them. So literally, as Carolyn said, there's no excuse. You've got to go out there, meet with developers, just mingle with them and understand a little bit of what's going on in the startup world, in the tech world. And that's going to help you navigate and understand and start figuring out the first steps for you. There are a lot of wonderful ideas that we have. And so you have to start somewhere in order to get started. And you're going to make mistakes. I made a lot of mistakes. And it's not just only on the tech side. It's also on the leadership side. It's also on the business side and the finance and all this stuff that us as cleaning businesses make mistakes every day and we correct as we go. It's literally the same thing with technology. It's just that you're adding one little more aspect to it. So, you know, mingle, find those developers, start talking to them, understand what is what and what is, and, you know, just understand what you're expecting. When I started, I didn't even know there was a difference between web and mobile development. I didn't know that was a difference. And so when I started talking to developers, a lot of it sounded like a different language. And you have to write those things down. When they say something you don't understand, write it down. 
ask, 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 ask. Don't worry about looking dumb. Don't worry about looking some type of way. Trust me, they looked some type of way when they were learning the same thing. And so they understand exactly where you're at. If someone looks you at a certain type of way because you don't know something, they're not a good fit for you because you are here to learn so that you can build something great, not to be ashamed of it. Right. So you should never feel any less of yourself for not knowing, you know, what's going on maybe in the beginning or understanding, you know, all the lingo. Definitely use your free resources. Like Diana said, you know, go on YouTube, go to the public library, read books, reach out to people, try to find mentors, online courses for free, like Diana mentioned, and get yourself acclimated somewhat to the lingo, to what's going on. That way, you know, we'll understand maybe 20% of it <laughs> if you're lucky and take notes and do exactly what Diana said. Go back and do your research, you know, teach yourself something different every day and just move your foot forward in, you know, in the right direction. Just get started. Just get started. Get started where you're at. It literally may take you just 30 minutes every day at a Starbucks under their Wi-Fi. And you'll find yourself you've moved so much further than you ever thought you would. There's so much opportunity in the cleaning industry. And it's not just only in tech. You can be the greatest marketer in the cleaning industry. You can be the greatest CFO in the cleaning industry. You can be a COO consultant to help cleaning businesses be able to organize themselves. I mean, there's so many ways to bring value in this industry, and it may just take 30 minutes of reading every day. If you don't have it at home, go to the Starbucks, like just sit down for 30 minutes and get it done. And you'll find that you have equipped yourself with tools that majority of people don't have. Right. And it's all about, again, just getting started and believing in yourself and taking that time out of your day to learn something new and enrich your mind with whatever it is that you're trying to learn. It's not going to be easy, but it's better than the alternative, right? Yes. Also, aside from the clean app that you guys have that connects cleaners with potential clients with no upfront fees, by the way, <laughs> what else do you guys have going on? Because I did receive your package of cleaning products, which I completely freaking love. And I do have on my Instagram. So you guys make sure you go check that out. Can you give us a little bit of background? Because you have some really awesome stuff on your website for sale that is also tailored to and for cleaners. Yeah. So we also thought about how the cleaner travels. And this really hit me in Phoenix when I saw a cleaner walk into the light rail with a bucket and a mop. And they were struggling to pull this this equipment on top of a bucket and a mop from one place to another. And I just thought, one, that was super unhygienic. And two, that must be cumbersome. This person is tired. And so we said, okay, how about we equip the house instead of the cleaner so that the cleaner can travel light and we stop cross-contamination between one household to another? Oh, I love that. And so we also even took it a notch further and said, how about we color code it and become above industry standard of color coding so that also if the customer decides to use any of those drugs, any of those gloves, anything that is in the cleaning kit, that they're not mixing it up and they're not getting themselves sick. And so we provide this custom cleaning kit that is used for the house. It stays in your customer's house. And so all you need to do is just travel to their house get the cleaning done and you'll be out your way now there are some exceptions for example like carpet cleaning of course you have to bring your own equipment but if you're a normal residential cleaner you don't have to bring all of this other stuff with you so you've really thought it all out so you have the cleaning packages for that stay in the client's home which are phenomenal you guys make sure to check out her website i'll be sure to link it down below but she has a number of different gloves for every different room there is my favorite high duster, by the way, Diana, <laughs> that I've ever come across in my entire life. And I buy a lot of cleaning supplies. That thing is like like 20 feet high, which is like super convenient because I live in a condo and it's built with a super high ceiling. So that is always coming in handy. And then I also saw that you guys sell some book bags so you can bring some of your stuff with. What else was in there? some face masks, 
Diana has a lot of cool stuff on that website made for cleaner. So you guys be sure to check that out. Diana, I would like to personally thank you on behalf of the entire cleaning industry for number one, making an app that's tailored to our needs. And as you mentioned plenty of times during this interview, putting and keeping the cleaner first. And also just want to say, you know, again, how proud I am of you, of how far you've come. Your success story is, it's just truly amazing and, you know, unique because again, you came here all alone and you just kept on pushing. When everything didn't seem to be working out, you just would not give up. And I'm so happy that you didn't because now we get to talk to you and use your app, of course. So tell us how or where we can find you and how we can support you as well as how we can sign up to be a part of the clean app community. So across all platforms on social media, we go with clean app. For cleaners, we go with cleaner app and that has a Y in it instead of EA. I'm the most active on LinkedIn and Instagram and I would love to get some support. I think also getting some feedback because we are making it for you literally. And so getting feedback from you and seeing how we can constantly improve your life through this application would be the best way to support us. At the end of the day, this is for you. So just let us know what you like, what you think we can improve on, and we'll do it right away. Awesome. So I'll be sure to link everything down below, all of Diana's socials, how you guys can connect with her. And do not forget to check out her business accounts as well. And that's spelled C-L-Y-N. Yes. A-P-P. Yes. Okay. So that's C-L-Y-N, A-P-P, and C-L-Y-N-E-R. Yes. A-P-P. Yep. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking the time out of your super busy day and enjoy the rest of the time that you have with your team. Where are you? You're in Arizona, right? I'm in Austin, Texas. Oh, you're in Austin, Texas. Girl, I can't keep up with you. (laughs) (laughs) I cannot keep up with you. I know you were doing like a three-month long tour. Oh, this is great. Do you see the type of friends that I have, you guys? My friends are jet setters, okay? We got Diana booping and bopping all over the U.S. with her team. Make sure to check her out, you guys. She is truly an inspiration to all of the entrepreneurs out there, not just in the cleaning industry, But every single one of us, she has the grit and the determination to be successful. And I am very excited to watch you on the rest of your journey and really just see you excel, man. I just watch your stories and you really inspire me because you get up on those stages and give your speeches like so eloquently. And I'm just like, damn, (laughs) I want to be that confident and and I hope to be one day. So you guys definitely check her out. Like I said, she's an inspiration to all entrepreneurs. She is doing the damn thing along with her team. Thank you, Carolyn. I appreciate you too. Okay, first off, kudos. I can't wait to see you soon. We definitely have to link up some at some point this year. Yes, we have to. And I'm looking forward to that actually. This next two months is going to be like insane, like literally sprinting. And I'm hoping that by the end of this Techstars cohort, we have something that is really going to change a lot of people's lives. So after that, I really want to come see you. I really do. Okay, awesome. (laughs) Well, you go work on changing lives and then we'll meet (laughs) up afterward. Thank you so much. I know that my viewers and our listeners are going to get a bunch of gems and a new way to connect themselves with potential clients. So thank you again. You and your team are doing amazing things. And I am so proud of you guys. Keep up the good work. Thank you. I'm proud of you too. And my team says hi because I'm constantly talking about you. Oh, awesome. (laughs) (laughs) I can't wait to meet them. Yes, you're going to see them too. Oh, by the way, I do love that they're they're like getting more comfortable on social too. I'm like, yes. yeah, yeah, they've been doing good. At yeah, they are. I'm like, like, keep showing them, keep showing. Them. Yeah, yeah. At first they were like, Diana, I don't know about this. They're like, go and ahead, Diana, you got this, you got this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, though. All right, well, you get back to your busy work and changing lives out there, and we will definitely catch up. Okay, thanks, Caroline. <laughs> <laughs>